Now today there's no sketch whatsoever, we're just going to paint it in the dry dry thing. So it's an interesting one this, and here's the colours. We've got some raw sienna, some alizarin crimson, ultramarine and burnt umber, and raw sienna plus a touch of red. And what that gives me is something like this. There's the, the orangey colour and there's the ochre or uh, the alizarin crimson and the mixture of blues and that right. I'll put that there. Now, I must apologise for the, the, the screen today because it's a beautiful day out there and in my, my log cabin, which is my shed, I call it my shed, uh, it's, the sun's streaming through the window and it's, and it's, it's working its way around and it's, uh, hopefully, it'll, it'll clear that top bit by the time I want to use it because I'm going to paint the bottom of the picture first on this one. Something different for you, okay? So I'll take the colours off and then we'll have a look at the painting. I've got the colours mixed, everything's ready and I can just, I'll paint, I'll be painting in this bit you can see here, all right? So let's, let's go for it. This is clean water. Clean water on the bottom here, that is. Just wet it through. Let's get. And the paper I use, but a lot of people ask me well, what paper do I use, and I use Saunders Waterford. Uh, and it's 200 pound or, or, or 420 grams rough and it's the high white if you're ever going to buy any and it is absolutely stunning paper it'll improve your paintings by 100% if you use it it's as simple as that that's how good it is a bit more up here and I've used it for many years and uh, I, it never lets me down plus the fact that being 420 grams or, or 200 pounds, whichever you like to call it, uh, I can put wet water on like this, and it, it, it doesn't buckle or, or cockle like the like 140 pounds or 300 gram. It's just that much better, and it makes life easier. And it also gives me more time to work on the areas that I've been working on. So it's a win-win situation all the way around. Right, that's that done. That's that's water on there. Now I'm gonna put some I'll put some raw sienna on first, I think. Yeah. That I like a bit of raw sienna. I'm gonna enjoy this one, because I'm not telling you what it is. We'll, we'll just we'll just have a go and see what we what we get. It's it's your painting this and it'll suit you. It's it's I'll tell you one thing about it. Uh we'll we'll make it uh, we'll make it winter, shall we? And then, then we'll see see what we get. I'll give it down here like that. Wipe my brush. Let's try a bit of this orange stuff now. It doesn't matter where it goes, you just you do it. It'll it, you you enjoy yourself. You'll love this, I'll tell you. Not a lot. And then we'll have a touch of uh, the alizarin crimson. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? We'll flick some light in here. I like the way the, the colours mix on the, on the, on the, on the paper, because I wet it, you see. Just let it, let it flow down, and away you go. Flip, 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 flip. And I think we'll have some, some of this, this a little crimson and off, oh, sorry, the ultramarine and the, the burnt umber. Have some of that on this now. Let's see how we go. It all blends in, it's lovely. 
You'll enjoy exactly what you what you get on this one. See what we've got there, see if we have a bit of tissue. Yeah, me. I'll flick something on the top bit, don't want that. It's this big brush that's doing it, you see, not me. I'm not I don't take, I don't take any blame for that. Right. We've got that far. That's okay, isn't it? I think the next thing we'll do is put some interesting shapes into this. Start with some a smaller brush. I'm just gonna mix a bit more of this. Ultramarine burnt umber, just want a, a bit more, more liquid. Right, let, let's put some, some downward strokes now, shall we? Anyway, it doesn't matter where you put them. Just you put what you want, where you want. I like these stripey things that come down like this. And while it still works, everything's, everything's just blending into the, the, the paper because it's wet. I say this paper's so good because you can work on it for so long. It doesn't bother at all, it just, just gets on with it and it lets you do it. And of course, if you don't want it to blend in so much or, or, or soften, you just wait until the thing dries a bit. It's as simple as that. We're making a nice pattern there we are. I think it makes, it makes it nice. If you, if you do this you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it every minute you will by doing this. Don't, don't worry about what you've got, just look at it when you've finished. Put that brush down. It's a little bit smaller now, see what we're doing. This is a lovely brush this I've got, it's, I said, I might tell you before, this, my, my friend bought it me and uh, it, it was like a rigger but it, it's, it's, the end is like a, like a dart, it's like a needle and it's so fine, you can get such, such fine touches with it, it just, and it seems to paint itself, you know, it, it, it does all, all whatever you want it to do, all you have to do is hold the brush, leave it to it. Good, not bad at all. That's nice, and a bit, a bit more of that, and I think. Make some stronger marks. And then 
the foreground's done, isn't it? We can just do it and then concentrate on the top. Right, it's a thicker line I want on this. It's still bleeding in a bit, isn't it? It's still not dry properly. But we'll see how we go. But I like a few nice heavy lines like this. <laughs> I think we'll have one about here as well. Perhaps, perhaps one here. a couple just here, that would be better. And one just here. Right to paint there. A bit thicker there. I've gone over the brush out and make this a bit thicker at the bottom there. I mean at the top, sorry. Right. Pull that brush down a bit now. Just to mix a bit more of that because I'm going to use a bit more of that before I, before I finish the foreground. Clean the brush out. And let's put a, another brush here, this type of brush. See how we go with this. doing things like this it just it's a nice painting this to Save and, and, and show your friends. Should I make some more stuff and keep running it out? Flowing. You'll have a nice foreground here, you will. You don't have to keep talking on this, you just keep enjoying yourself. I'm doing the 
the same thing, so I'll probably cut some of this out on when I, put, when I record it for you. But the main thing is, I want you to see what we're doing. brush on the scene. Stop me fiddling that will. I'll make it a nice Christmas machine. You, you can do it as, a, as a, a Christmas card for your friends. How's that? A nice, a nice, lovely picture for your friends. I'll think the world of you. They will. If you notice, I've, I've, I've turned it over, and what, I, what I've done actually is uh, I've, I've, I've done the, the, the top part of the picture first, but upside down. Ah, it looks better that way up, doesn't it? Hey, so we'll continue right into the foreground. So you try that, and you'll find it a lot easier. Right, what we've got down here, I'm going to put it's, it's winter, okay. So I'll leave this to sort of a whitey with snow on that, but I want to put a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a lakey thing in here, something like that. So we're going to reflect some of that uh, stuff in the sky. So let's do that first. I think I'll put a bit of water on that first, just to give me sort of a an effect I want. This is clean water. I'll take it off the edge of the picture there. So we're just seeing part of the the, the, the pond effect. And the reason I put this pond in, by the way, folks, is, is because it uh, it allows me to show some of these reflections, doesn't it? Let's see how we go with this. Right, first colour we want to use is that alizarin crimson, because that's that colour just here, look like this. We're going to get that reflection, aren't we? Pop that in, we need that. And we need some of this uh, orangey stuff, because that's about, isn't it? Because what's what's in the in the sky, which is the sky just behind there, setting sun, uh, is going to reflect in the pond, isn't it, or the lake, or whatever you're going to call it. 
So the next cover I used was that, was that alizarin crimson, the pinky stuff, wasn't it? So we've got to use some of that up, haven't we? So that alizarin crimson comes in about here, doesn't it? There's bits all over there as well. I think I'm going to put some of this, this uh, ultramarine and burnt umber because some of these colours are in, into there, aren't they? This, this bit darky bit here. Let's put some of that dark stuff in as well. Some across this side as well. It's an important part of your picture. This 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 uh, lake or pond or whatever you like to call it, because it's it's uh, sort of a, giving you sort of a, a focal point for your whole painting. So what we're going to do now is, is represent the. Uh, uh, some, some of these trees and that's that's uh, that's been put in. So let's use a, a, a smallish brush for this, and uh, we'll get some French ultramarine, burnt umber. You know I don't use many colours, but uh, the, the, all, all these are really it, it gives you colour your pictures harmony. You're not using too many colours. So mix a touch of that again. Right, this one is about here, so we're going, we're going to see that there, aren't we? And we're going to see that one there as well, aren't we? We can see that one there as well. And the next one to it. And we're going to see a touch of this there, just, just here. And also we're going to see some of these in the background, but not as not as strong in in, in, in tonal value. It's going to be a bit weaker, so we've got to calm it down a bit. But, but they'll be still there, but into the distance, and some across here look like this. But I've made the, the colour paler to put it further back in the picture. I think that'll do with that. But uh, because it's, well the sun is behind it really, so what we're also going to create is, is uh, there'll be a shadow on the edge of the edge of the lake, won't there? So where, it, where the snow comes down to the down to the lake, it'll 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 it leans over, doesn't it? So there'll be a, a shadow about here, or well, the the edge of the lake will show there. The edge of the snow will be. It's in darkness where the the these hitting the. coming against the water there. And 
and we'll also get to where this, this snow hangs over this here, it'll be, it'll be dark there as well. See it hanging over. And of course, we can't we can't see that what what's this side because as the snow goes over, it, it goes away from us, and we don't see it. So we only see the the this side here. A little, a little bit dark on there like that. A little bit, but are not quite straight. <laughs> little bent edges, isn't that? You get this sort of effect. Of course, we'll get uh, some indications of ripples in the water. You know, it's not very, not very many because it's uh, it's a still still day. But I want to just to represent one or two in there, just to to give fl flicks across the across the pond, this sort of thing. The, the, the water is, is level, so you, you, your little flicks have got to be level as well. Just breaks up the water's line a bit. And of course, it's 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 nice to tattle the snow now, which is. It's just a flat, but we've got to put colour into it. So I'm going to get a brush that's, that's going to help me with that. That's about a number six there. Is it a number six? So I'll look. Yeah, it is number six. Yeah. Now what I want to do is introduce, see what, what the snow is is, is, is is white, I know, but it's not white because it picks up some of the colours that from from these these areas here and these areas. So So you're going to get some of these these reflections or, or, or tonal values onto the onto the snow, which takes takes away that that just sheet of white which we want to do. So some of the colours we're going to get first are the 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 palest colour, which is the which is the sienna or ochre, whichever one you're using. And we should probably get some some, some highlighted on this across here like this. Just a flick of of sunshine on there. On top of these these undulations, like this, coming down to the water's edge, and we we'll get some around here where the the, the, the glow is, is at its best. And to show the undulations as well. And then of course we've got some of this, this orange stuff, haven't we? That we made. Just a weak a weak indication of this. Because we've got orange around here, haven't we?
course, what we can do with this, if you like, is we can create a bit of a, a path there, and somebody somebody else is going to be walking walking into it. How's that? And of course, I want some of this pinky colour, don't we? You know what that is? That's the alizarin crimson. So I'm going to pop some of that stuff in as well. That's, that's got its glow there, isn't it? Lovely, lovely glow, just there. Of course, we're going to get some of that glow, glow effect across here as well. Probably a bit too too strong. I'll try to weaken it a little bit. Some in this piece here. Just keep your flow going so it's a, it's a pathway. Strong that. Try and weaken that a bit. Soften it. There we are. Put some water to it. Let's soften it a little bit. And of course, we're going to get some darks in it, aren't we? Where the, the light's coming from this. There's going to be some some of these pieces with, with with deep shadow, if you like. So we'll get some deep shadow in this stuff here, like this. Look. What you also get is you see with this tree here that that's going to give sort of a, a reflection down here, isn't it? Down to the water's edge. And you're also going to get one from this one. This one's close as well, isn't it? So I just suggest something on the snow with that. Don't go mad, just, just, you, you, you're suggesting these things. There's another one beside there, isn't it? I'm going to do that one as well. And the same with this side, you're going to get that effect. Quite big trees these, and they come straight down there, don't they? They're full of the contours of the of the snow. And I think uh, we'll need some darks in, in, in there as well. Some we'll get some shadows from this, won't we?
Right, I think uh, we'll have a couple of figures in now. Or one or two, whatever you fancy. I'll just, just dry that a bit because uh, we need to sort of... But before I do these figures, I'll, I'll put a, try it a bit and I'll put some to round the ponds. You usually get a bit, bit of uh, trigger in, stuff like that. And, and of course, we're going to get some, uh, like, like, you know, this sort of stuff. Round the leg. Flicky stuff around that. This this sort of brings this uh, the side of the lake towards you. Takes the, the flatness of it. Little bits of stuff like this. And it's it, 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 it also nice if you put some winter berries on there, that, that might help. Let's, let's, oh, we're going mad now, you're yeah, getting winter berries for your money. How's that? That'll make it look Christmassy. Few berries on there, look. I'm tempted to put Robin in, but no, I'm going to fight it. We'll stick to the red berries. Just flicking it with the edge of the brush. Oh yes, right. If you feel like singing Christmas carols right now. I've broken that up a little bit. But I, think, I still think we need some figures in. So I'll have some figures, shall we? I'll put Fred in. He'll be like a, he likes a red jumper, does Fred? See, where shall we put Fred? Do we put him here? Or do we put him here? I think we put him here. On this path. So Fred. Is he here? Well, I haven't drawn him anything. Just, we just put him in with a brush. Nice lad, Fred. Loves a walk in the winter like this with his, his wife. 
Mabel. She's a nice girl. So he's got, he's got a red sweater on there because it's Christmas. I'll put him some trousers on. I think some dark trousers. But have some nothing, something juicy dark there. This is where I go off my usual pattern of paints by just picking out odd things off the palette that, that, that suits my needs for little tit tats like this. So this is this is Fred's winter trousers. So Fred is he's down here. walking towards us like that, you see. Big lad. Dark haired lad he is. Italian, I think. I'm putting my head on here. Put him a dark face on. There he is. And of course, don't forget when you're doing this, you're reflecting the water, won't you? Don't, even, don't miss that bit. Some darks for his trousers as well. That'll do for Fred. Now I'll slip Mabel in, I think. I think we can, we can put Mabel, say, just here, because she's she, you can hold her hand then. How's that? I'll put Mabel in, yes. Mabel's wearing a, a bright yellow top, which is a Christmas present. So we'll get this nice yellow top for her. She's smaller than him, but beautifully marked. Here she is. She's got this yellow top on. Now this cadmium yellow, about what I'm talking about, is, is an opaque colour. What that means is, in, in all money, is it's, uh, it will cover whatever it's going over, which is useful. See, it's covering that grey there, which is nice. Good. Let's, let's break it so that she's a bit further away and holding Fred's hand like this. I do like a bit of romance. We need it these days when we're when locked down. I think they, they must have been caught in here because if they were married, she'd be over here somewhere. So uh, we'll see how we go. She, she got around out like that. I know what she's expecting, but uh, she's a redhead. So let's put her in as a redhead, shall we? There she is, and she's got some trousers on, matching trousers to to Fred. I think there was two for one somewhere. Buy one, get one free. And she's keeping up with him like this. 
just striding out meaningfully. Car to the feet's in the snow. Don't worry about that. Hand down there. And we've got to put her face on, haven't we? Oh. She has good face in. Let's see what colour face she's going to have. You've got a bit of tanned face. There she is. What's happened to Fred's face? It's all gone pear shaped, really. So I've pulled some of that colour out there. I'll give Fred a. Give Fred a bit of face. That's better. Now, don't, don't forget this. Mavis is going to cast a shadow, isn't she? Don't forget that she's going to be showing a shadow in here. And a yellow top will reflect in the water. So we'll see it like this sort of thing. Get all the Fred's hand like that. Her arm out just down here. And of course we've got to put a head on, haven't we? Which in this case is a red head, so it's going to be that colour. So I'll make it like that. So you, you're just suggesting it. You're not sort of giving her all the, the bits and pieces. She's got that. She's got Fred. And she's happy. She's got a new jumper on. It might be. I wonder if, if they're walking that way. They have some footsteps here, won't they? Where they've been. So they might get a few footsteps across here like this lot. As so you walk down this 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 way like this. You could walk over this hill. Whatever your picture, you make it up as you go along, like I'm doing. We haven't used a pen, have we? We a pencil or anything. We're just we're just guessing. Which is nice because you you can't go wrong then, because wherever you put your marks, they're right. Oh, Joe, they come over that hill there, look, from in between those trees. And they're on the way up here for, for some for tea, or whatever they're doing. Right, this foreground looks a bit white, so I'm going to have to put some colour in it from the various parts of the, the painting. So let's put a biggie brush on this. Get some yellowy colour down here where that glow is. See, there's not much white when you've done it, it's, it's all colour reflected. Some of that orange in there, see, there's that lovely orange. Blend it in with this. this Okay. Oh, some yellow this stuff that's glowing glow around here as well. Bit of orange in there.
show in some of the pinks and some of the some of the darks of course Some dark under that, these little twigs here. With a tufty. Bit of a ridge across there. Into a stage to look looking for things to do, and I should stop now. This is also always a good time to stop when you're looking for things. Mind you, I might put one or two more little little things just just about here. They're like like these because they're uh, they're growing across there. And let's let's put one or two more in. Just flick them in here. on there stick a few red berries on That's shadow. And now I am really fiddling. We should just stop. But before I do that, there's something I just want to try. Might work, let's see. I've got some white gouache. Remember we've used white gouache in the past? I might put a, just a touch, touch of this on, on the water, just to... I like where the ripples are on the water. The bit of a French reflection, of course. Across here. More water on that. This is white gouache, this folks. I've used it before. It's in a, in a tube. I keep it separately. It's, this is the stuff. This here. It's called designer designer gouache. Let's just put this little slip in here. And then put the brushes down quick. Well that's all for today folks. Uh 
I hope you've enjoyed this this one with you. We turn it upside down and had to go that way. Uh, give us a like and a, a subscribe, and, and we'll, we'll we'll see you on the next one. Of course, if you if you do subscribe, you'll you'll get it sent straight to you, hot, and first in the queue. Any questions? Please give a comment, and uh, we, we we'll take it from there. Many thanks for being with us. Bye bye.